welcome to Faculty Live Lounge. My name is Elena Amadovar, and I'll be facilitating a discussion with, about the e-design process with Melanie Adams, the Director of Career Education and Coaching at the FAU Career Center. Thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here, Elena. Yay. So let's start by telling me you about yourself and your teaching experience. Great. Thank you so much again. Um, as you mentioned, my name is Melanie, and I'm currently the Director of Career Education and Coaching at the FAU Career Center. I've been here for 10 years, really working on the student side of career development. So what the Career Center does is we really help students uh, with their career readiness skills and to really hopefully get some practical experiences as a college student mm -hmm. and looking how they will develop that into the real world to get uh, internships, employment, graduation, whatever those career goals are. And a part of working in the Career Center is we do a lot of teaching. So we meet mm -hmm. with students one on one, we do workshops, and we also have courses that we run in order to help these students. So when I was first brought on to uh, FAU and worked in the Career Center, I had the experience of working in a uh, teaching a one credit class. It's called Career and Life Planning. It's really for uh, first and second year students who are just learning about career development, deciding on their majors, mm -hmm. learning their options. And we ran that course for eight years. Myself and other uh, Career Center team members teach that. And most recently, which is I know how we got connected, mm -hmm. is we launched uh, in conjunction with uh, the College of Arts and Letters, a course called the Professional Development Course. And this was our first time doing an asynchronous three credit course. And you know, we're really excited to be able to offer this to students. Yeah, so we worked on SLS 4342, mm -hmm. which is professional development. Can you tell us more about that course? Absolutely, that's a great question. Mm -hmm. So with the professional development course, uh, and again, we developed this with the College of Arts and Letters because there was a little bit of a gap in some of the coursework uh, talking about the full career development process. Initially, this course was started uh, with the idea that this would be a capstone course within the new uh, major, the bachelors that they have in professional development or professional studies. So this class was created to be that capstone. However, as we started working on the course and you know, with our relationship with the college, they noted that this course, they could see the uh, flexibility and the options for this course. So we worked with the interdisciplinary study program and this course was able to help students who may be non-traditional, weren't able to do some of the experiential learning part of their degree and they could use this as an option as well. And within that, once this course went live and was posted, we were able to, uh, students just found the course. So this course is 100% asynchronous at this mm -hmm. point. And it's really, said so mostly College of Arts and Letters students, but an engineering student in the course in the spring. And this was, wow. again, the first time we were able to teach this course and really talking about that career development process. Yeah, I noticed that you said that you taught a previous course for eight years, the mm -hmm. SLS 1301. Mm -hmm. um, that was in, in person? Yes, uh, so career and life planning, that was uh, traditionally an in-person class, traditional once uh, once or twice a week, depending if it was in the mini semester where students would come into the class. Uh, because it was a one credit course, uh, we use the same textbook actually for both courses, mm -hmm. but the information in career and life planning is what they call unit one. So it's really mm -hmm. that getting to know yourself. Where this course is a three credit course, so it's we're able to teach the full textbook three units where we talk about uh, getting to know yourself, really that fundamental career development about you, then about the career and world of work outside, you know, kind of those things that happen that are out of our control, the economy, COVID, things like that. Yeah. And then the last part is really talking about um, that career readiness piece. And it was traditionally in person. I taught the class when everything did go virtual. We did move it to a Zoom type of course, but it was still live. So face or face to face yeah. per se. And then with this, um, when we talked to the college, just based on the population of online learning, yeah. they highly recommended, and I think you and I went back and forth a little bit on this as well, for it to be an asynchronous course. I was a little nervous about doing that because this course is so interactive Yeah, uh, where we you know, talk to students. It's really, you know, they learn career development, but they're also learning about themselves. 
But then when you and I got to me and we went through the process uh, with the Center of Online uh, Education, it was really helpful to be able to meet with you and develop this. And I felt more comfortable as time went on with the idea of the course. Yeah. So um, later on, mm-hmm. we'll talk about how like going from face to face to online learning could be a little bit overwhelming. But once you got into it, mm-hmm. it was a little bit more smooth sailing. Mm-hmm. And I cannot wait to hear mm-hmm. about your Um, students feedback but for now what I want to talk about is you know the major themes of your course so we included media in your course we included assignments and assessments and these assignments had such real life application (laughs) so first I want to talk about media Mm -hmm. how was incorporating media into your course Um, how did it go what were Mm -hmm. your um, reservations about it how did it it look in the course Mm -hmm. yeah yeah, that's an awesome question because that was something I think in our initial meeting, I'm just like, I think initially I'm just like, I really still want to teach this Zoom and uh-huh. uh, <laughs> you and your team were just like, we hear you, but you know, it's probably better, you know, asynchronously. So when we you know, were going over, how do we make, how do we bring this course to life? Because yeah. I wanted it to be more than read a textbook, answer questions, move on. Uh, so when you, when I think we all met together in the initial team meeting and you talked about some of the ideas of the different media options we yes. could have, I was like, okay, I can maybe see this working. And I'm like, is it just me like sitting in front of my camera in my office doing a Zoom? And that's when you told me about the studio that you have mm-hmm. and all the professional equipment. So then we're like, oh, we can act, we can bring this course to life by recording all of the sections or in all of the uh, lecture topics and really make it, you know, so the student on the other side of the screen really feels like they're in class. So yeah. I think it started initially with, you know, doing the traditional lecture style PowerPoint classes in the studio, which was really fun. And then when you guys told me I could go out of the studio, I was like, that's an option. <laughs> yes. So I really wanted to touch on that because mm-hmm. Nick was our media partner. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Dick. <laughs> um, and we were able to go to the Career Center and we were actually able to go tour the Career Center. Mm-hmm. So how was that experience for you? That was, I think, one of the most fun days we had. I mean, I like going in the studio and Nick and I <laughs> uh, go going back and forth with things, but being able to actually bring your team and pretty much everyone who is taking the course into the Career Center, I thought was really special because a part of the course and how it's designed is for students to come to the career center because when we go talk about assignments you'll see some of them are tied to career center type of activities and services so and I know it's not always feasible to have everyone actually come to the career center now so I wanted to have come up with an idea how we can bring this to life so students can see what a career center looks like and really get to interact so that's when we had the opportunity the team came they were so great they had a great camera equipment. It was very professional. And one of my colleagues, so I was able to get other people involved, she gave the Career Center a tour. And we really got, so students got to see behind the scenes. And they actually got to see the resources of the Career Center without actually having to leave their home or desk or wherever they yeah, were tuning in from. that was my main, like, I was so happy about that mm-hmm. because if you're taking an online mm-hmm. course and you're in another part of Florida mm-hmm. and you you can't come to campus. At least they were able to go and see all the resources that were provided that were there in campus, but also online. Another video that I really liked in your course was the career day fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the course, to your point, how we were able to really bring it to life, we figured that was, it was important to do these videos. So it's not just reading about, oh, the Career Center offers these services, let them see it. And one of our main events that we do and we're known for are career fairs because that is the number way, uh, number one way that students find jobs, internships. And we do offer them both virtually and in person, but it was really helpful to make a video of the career fairs. So that way students who maybe couldn't come to a career fair or maybe not that particular career fair, but in the future they could attend a career fair, could really see what it was like. Uh, so again, the team came out, they were fabulous. And we had the opportunity to actually walk around the career fair. We got some really great footage and they could see what it looked like. And even for students who weren't in online learning, this course is so helpful or this video yeah. that was created from this course is so helpful because we've never been able to do something like this before. And in the video, we had the opportunity, we talked to current students. So they didn't just hear from me talking the whole time. Um, they got that in their, their lectures, but they were it was very interactive that they heard from students about what it's like to attend a career fair. They actually got to hear from the employers that were there recruiting FAU mm-hmm. students, getting to say, hey, this is actually what I'm looking for. Come to the career fairs in the future. You, you know, These are you know, how we 
you know, what we were recruiting for, and they were able to get tips. So they were really able to prepare for hopefully the goal is that they do eventually attend a career fair, and this way they won't be so blindsided of what it mm-hmm. could look like when they attend. And it just it came out better than I could have imagined that a student could really see what it was like to attend a career fair if they weren't able to attend mm-hmm. one or even before they attended yes. one. No, what I loved about this course mm-hmm. was that there are so many opportunities for students to grow, you know, which leads me into the assignments and the assessments because you were giving them opportunities to look at the career center, look at all those resources. You were able to give them opportunities to see a career fair before they join one. And now I want to talk about the assignments because a lot of the assignments provided real world application. So describe some assignments if you can you know, go deep into them. Of course. So that's the beauty of this course is in that we even tell students when they take the course or the one credit version of the course is that they're really able, they're really learning about themselves. They're learning the career theories, they're learning the processes, they're learning, Mm -hmm. you know, the correct way to do it, not just Googling something on how, how do I find a job? They're learning the correct way to go about doing it. But at the end of the day, it's about themselves. So we wanted it to be as interactive as possible and engaging as possible because yes, they need to learn, read the book, take quizzes, Mm -hmm. that piece of it, of course, we really want to make sure they were getting something out of it. So in the course, we always do a pre-test or a pre-assessment and a post-assessment just to see their learning and kind of where their career, um, their mind is at when it comes to career decision making. So we always do that. That's kind of how the course starts and ends Mm -hmm. with these pre and posts. And it's no right or wrong answer. So that gives me an idea of what are some areas I may need to focus in a little bit more. And then the assignments in the course were very uh, purposeful for them. Mm -hmm. So it was really for them to be introspective. They start with writing an autobiography, which is helpful for me to get to know the students Mm -hmm. uh, just because I'm not seeing them live technically. Uh, So we did use a lot of message boards. Again, so they felt like they were a part of something, a part of a group. And then some of their more individual type of assignments they worked on is they had the opportunity to do a career interest assessment. So they answered questions about themselves uh, through what's called our major knowledge program, which is a resource available for all students. But within their major knowledge results, they not only took the career assessment, but then they were asked critical questions that they used on a messaging board to be able to interact with the other students to say, hey, this was my interest personality type. What's yours? And they can kind of find connections with the other students. Yeah. Yeah, and you were just saying that you had several students from different programs Mm -hmm. join in your class. So it must have been really interesting to see how they all interacted with each other and been like, oh, I'm really interested in engineering while Mm -hmm. others were interested in other careers. So I'm sure the student to student interaction was awesome to see. Yeah, so it was fun to read it because you would even see people like, oh, I've been trying to get a position in that type of company or tell me more about this. So they were also learning from each other. So that was really important to not only do the assignment, but to have the message yeah. board feature set up that I know you helped me create. Oh, nice. And then the other pieces of the course where we incorporated more of that interactive learning is that every student did have to create a resume. Yes. They couldn't finish a professional course. I was development just about course. to bring that up. The, mm-hmm. the resume and cover letter assignment mm-hmm. was one of my favorites. I wish I had that resource going to college. So can you talk more about that? Yes. So when a student, as one of the chapters, I think two of the chapters of the textbook are really devoted to those professional type of uh, papers that you have to write, uh, cover letters, personal statements, resumes. So they were able to watch almost like a workshop. It ended up feeling like about how to build their resume. Mm -hmm. Um, Ideally, I saw maybe students had their resume in front of them as they were watching it or learning about it. So they had to actually build their resume was a piece of the assignment, um, listening to it with the videos that we recorded in studio. And then the second part of the resume assignment was they utilized a new tool we have called JobScan. This actually uses AI technology that a student would upload the resume that they hopefully just created and modified based Mm -hmm. on the lecture, then they uploaded this resume to the job scan resource, which all FAU students have access to, and it would scan their resume against a position they were interested in. So they could see if what they were using in their resume would get them to a better position in getting an interview. So they would use this job scan tool and it would pick up keywords and then they would get kind of a score deposited back to them to say, you may want to edit this or based on the job that your internship you're applying to, you may want to use this word uh, better 
or this is another way you can format your resumes to make sure it aligns. So I was able to do some of the things that I can't do mm -hmm. uh, with, you know, in a class like this, that they were able to get that instant feedback about their document. And then based on the criteria of the assignment, they had to get a certain score and go up. So to make sure, so they had to rerun it through the scanner to make sure that it was working well. And then once they got to the point of the minimum criteria, they would upload their assignment to Candra. So ideally, hopefully every student left there with a competitive resume, or at least knowing how to create one, if anything. That is such an incredible opportunity for all the students. So I'm really glad you touched on that. Another assignment that I really loved was the practice interview assignment. Mm -hmm. So now that they have their resume, now that they have their cover letter, and they've been able to improve it, now let's try the real thing and let's do an interview. So can you talk about that one? Yeah, so <laughs> the interview assignment, uh, I was actually back and forth and I talked to some of my colleagues who've taught the or a similar course about it of you know, how do we really implement this? Because the interview is one of those things that people are most nervous about. Mm -hmm. And it's also from a career lens, the one appointment that students tend to or service that they tend to stray from because it's you know, it's hard to get feedback on how you interview and it's a nerve wracking. It's a skill that you have to build. Yeah. So knowing that we're like, okay, how can we incorporate this into the course? So it was a two part assignment. So the first part of the assignment where students uh, utilize a resource we have called interview stream again, available to all FAU students, where it's almost like a first round interview for most of us, where you get questions that pop up on the screen and they record themselves for like that first round interview. So that gave them some experience just starting to talk about you know, their interests, their skills, mm -hmm. their values, and what they have to bring to the company. And it mirrored what happens in real life when you're doing an interview. This is a tool used by many companies. Then the second part of the assignment, uh, this was where we went back and forth, but it ultimately worked out really well, is a student actually had to schedule an appointment for a practice interview. Knowing that it's online students, I gave them the option, come in, virtual, mm -hmm. we have evening times, we made it as flexible as we could with the Career Center to accommodate these students, and they actually had this one hour meeting they had to attend. And during the practice interview assignment, they met either with myself or one of the uh, Career Center coaches, and they actually stimulated a real life interview. And they had questions they were asked, they were expected to answer. We I recommend dressing like they would for an actual interview. Like really they had the full practice interview experience. And then at the end, they were able to get feedback from their career practitioner to say, oh, am I talking too fast? Am I saying um too much? How does this look like? And we asked them to bring in a position they would actually want to interview for. And the students loved it. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't, I mean, it is just such a great opportunity having the students do something in real life mm -hmm. that simulates the outside world. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to take these skills and they're going to take that for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to now talk about our experience with the e-design process. Mm -hmm. How did the process go for you? What were your favorite parts? Um, you know, we had mm -hmm. the, the planning phase. We had course content. Then, you know, I loaded the course mm -hmm. and we reviewed it. What were your favorite parts about the e-design process, and what insights did you gain from developing the online course? Great. Uh, honestly, I was nervous to begin with these, <laughs> and we had a, a rather short timeline because we weren't 100% sure when we were going to launch the course. Mm -hmm. So I know we had met uh, us the semester before the course launched, and I think at first I was really nervous. I'm like, there's so much to do when you're developing a new course, and you know, teaching is just part of my position. I work at the Career Center full time. So I was like, how will I fit this all in? Well, I meet mm -hmm. the deadlines, but working with you, particularly Elena and your group, made it so easy. We had these meetings, you set up deadlines. We have of their courses and to be able to have a course blueprint that your team creates was so helpful in making sure that not only were we teaching you know, lessons and using the textbook and using that piece in the Career Center's expertise, but you really made sure and you kept us or kept me to those learning outcomes. Yes. You made sure that everything we were doing wasn't just to you know, agree, we wanna have people come to the Career Center and of course get these skills, but it was actually matching what they were learning. And I know we adjusted some of the assignments to make sure we included more of that. So I found that process just extremely helpful because you help keep me on track as well. And even sometimes when yeah, you're like, oh, I know I have to develop this or do that, but you had deadlines, <laughs> you were in touch with me to make sure I was meeting them. And then when we went in studio, which was, I felt like when Nick and I were, it was almost like rapid recording to make sure we had it in time. But again, Nick kept me you know, up to date as well. Like, okay, every time we finished one recording, he's like, let's book your next session. I'm like, okay, I have this, this is help keeping me accountable as well. So it was, 
a, a really fun process, I thought. And even as an instructor, um, it kind of challenged me because I was like, okay, I know, you know, I'm used to teaching in front of a classroom. Mm -hmm. You know, you have the audience, you can, you know, kind of have that to keep the conversation going. So for me, it really challenged me to make sure, okay, like, let me read the textbook, make sure I'm matching if I'm, you know, really getting those gaps because I'm not going to get those instant questions that I'm yeah. used to. So I think it was a good challenge to have. And I felt at the end of it, I felt really even better off for it and really excited about it. And something I was really proud of that I was able to work with uh, you and your team because it gave me an amazing job and we're so great to work with. Thank you so much. I really loved how you touched upon like having the planning document that we had and then, you know, having the assignments and making sure that they matched or aligned with the course outcomes and the module level objectives mm -hmm. that we created for each because it is so important for the students to be able to do what they're actually being mm -hmm. asked to do in that module. So I'm really glad mm -hmm. you like that part of it because um, it's really like that is the most important, I think, for developing a high quality course. Um, now that you've taught the course, um, have you had any student feedback? Uh, definitely, because that was something I think that was really important to have, especially doing kind of your like the almost felt like a pilot episode of when we uh, launched the course. But we def we had feedback uh, from students. Some of them that I actually met with during their practice interview, I actually would ask them. I'd be like, you know, after we finished the practice interview, I was like, "How is this course going for you? It's the first time we're doing this in an asynchronous way." And the students were really excited about it. I mean, they were saying things that I think speaks to uh, your team is it was really easy to navigate. They knew what the course expectations were. Uh, they loved the canvases. Because I know sometimes as a faculty member, we've always, were at least in the Career Center courses and the courses I've taught and even some of the other courses I was um, an adjunct for, I was just like, okay, here's the content, go build it. Mm -hmm. But having this, it was like a really professional class and it really made it nice. Like it really, all those upgrades that I don't know how to do, uh, your team was able to do. So I think the functionality of the course I was told was really well. And then the content of the course and, and we did the spot evaluations we okay. had. And then there was also an internal uh, course review that was anonymous because I really wanted that feedback from students to see you know, where we need to build and make adjustments. And pretty overwhelmingly, people said that it was a fun, interactive class, that they were uh, they enjoyed the videos. I was nervous as the person being in the videos. I was like, I hope this is exciting and interesting. I did. I still haven't watched all the videos. <laughs> I'm like still nervous about that piece. But they all said that you know, they enjoyed uh, learning about it. And I had one spot evaluation that uh, it was such a long paragraph. And the student was so grateful for having to take this course. Uh, she was just raving about what a great course it was. Everyone should have to take this course. It should be a requirement. Uh, so getting that type of feedback, I'm like, okay, you know, we know we were doing good work mm -hmm. and exciting work, but to actually hear it back from the students was uh, just, it was really helpful to see that. And now we'll be going around two or starting Yay. this fall for our next, uh, our next part of the course. That mm -hmm. is incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love the feedback that you got. Mm -hmm. Like, I think we have the template that keeps everything super organized. Mm -hmm with the module pages and then going into each assignment. And obviously the content is all you and the videos is all you, so that is impeccable. And then I completely agree with the student. I think everyone should be taking this course because it allows for um, you to be prepared for what's coming next. Right after college, mm -hmm. you know, you're expected to get um, a job mm -hmm. and you're expected to go do interviews and write your resume. And I really love that AI component that, mm -hmm. you know, when you go apply for a job, you put your resume in, well, they put your resume <laughs> in, they kind of see the key keywords, they select it. So again, I think it's just such a great, great course. And it was built perfectly, I would say. <laughs> but but you're like, to, just the your team, it was so helpful because you know, if I would have done this, because I know in the initially like, oh, you can always zoom and record your own classes and we'll edit it. But going to the studio, um, I was able to talk to Nick, who didn't know about my uh, career co or the content of the course and say to Nick, like, does this sound OK? Like, you know, mm -hmm. as a as a student, is this something you want to hear? And getting that feedback back that it was like, yes, you're on target. Good. Or maybe you want to talk a little bit less or look this way. Just getting that coaching and that this was just I didn't even know this was a resource that FAU offered as an instructor. It was so helpful to get that because like, I felt like even though I knew the content, I was being coached on how to make it more interactive and a better 
product and a better course for students to hopefully get the most out of it. Like I could not have made it as interactive and well without uh, all of you. Thank you so much. That's so (laughs) sweet. I'm really glad that you've had such a great experience and um, the media team has been super helpful with Mm -hmm. coaching and setting us up even (laughs) for today. So like these are all great experiences. Sure. And I know I'm setting up my next appointment with you so we can get launched for oh, yeah. the fall. So I'm I think super that, excited. I think that's also the part that I didn't realize when I went into this process. I thought it was like a one and done piece of it. But the fact that I can continue to come back and you can help me uh, yeah. reorganize things or if links change or those pieces, it's so nice to be able to have to go onto the website, make an appointment. The open lab. Yes. yes. And be able to meet with the group to do that. And I know uh, when we were recording the videos, I was like, can I re-record? They're like, well, no. But if you know, if there's one section you need to ever change, and just having that I think is a great tool. Yeah. If you ever do want to re-record, we do open labs and then we can re-record um, a section at a time and then we can upload them into your new course. So I see there's a question. Hello, Dr. Adams. Um, I think that what you spoke about professional skills and professional development is incredibly important. And it's something that uh, is very beneficial to students along with the curriculum that they are studying. Um, But I wanted to hear from you, what are some ways that we can, you know, maybe gently introduce professional development into our courses that we develop online? That's a really good question. I'm so glad you brought that up because one of the things that we do at the Career Center is we actually have a canvas, like a a skeleton, not with um, that you guys believe that yours is even better. So we're even upgrading it even more, but a skeleton where some of these assignments that I mentioned, like the job scan assignment, resume practice interviews, we give our playbook to other faculty and staff. So if you ever did want to incorporate this into a course you're already teaching or some of these professional skills, we do have these uh, Canvas modules that you can download into your course. Uh, You're welcome to invite the Career Center into your course. So if you're like, I just want to have one lecture that talks about uh, career readiness or skills, uh, you can always invite the Career Center into that. Or if you wanted us just to be able to give you resources to help you being able to do this, you know, we're definitely, we want as many of st- students to benefit from these mm-hmm. resources. So we are very transparent. We're an open book. We want to be able to share our resources with any faculty or staff that are looking to incorporate pieces of this yeah. uh, into their own course. So uh, you can definitely, and I think someone in the chat can either drop my email or we can, you can always reach out uh, to me as well. I'm happy to connect with you to see how can we use you know, some of this content in other courses because it's definitely transferable. Yeah, I think every student would mm-hmm. appreciate uh, our little resource about the Career Center mm-hmm. in their courses. I want to thank you so much for being of here course. and talking to us today. Um, I It was such a pleasure being able to design and build this course with you. I will say a million times, I think so many students will benefit from this course and having you as an instructor Mm -hmm. is great because then they can reach out to you at any single point within Mm -hmm. their FAU, uh, their years at FAU to be able to talk to you and figure out more options for the future. Yeah, I definitely. I recommend this to everyone because we have an internship course, for example, in our uh, in the Career Center as mm-hmm. well. That is an online course that hasn't gone through this process. So I'm nudging my colleague. I'm like, you have to do this. This is yeah, really such a good process to be able to uh, do this. So I do recommend this to anyone who, if you're on the fence, should I go through this type of uh part of you know, this, mm-hmm. this type of experience or process, I definitely recommend working with you in the group. And I mean, anyone that might be listening to this later in the group, if you ever do want to incorporate any sort of career readiness into your curriculum or have the Career Center come and guest speak or bring an employer, uh, we are happy to help that and work with that. You can always email career at fau.edu and we can help connect with uh, you and your team. Mm-hmm.